Hello and welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer and today we're reviewing the Nikon SP600 in 2020. This video is a shorter version of the Nikon Flash Guide focusing just on the SP600 for those that don't necessarily want to learn about the entire range. So if you've already watched the full video, you may want to skip this one. The Nikon SP600 was released in 2004. It was the more consumer orientated version of the SP800. However, it shares a lot of the same features. It has a zoom range of 24 through to 85 millimeters, which is quite a bit shorter than the SP800. However, it does cover the sort of most frequently used focal ranges at that time when it was produced. It has a flash head that will swivel and can be uh, basically customized to whichever direction you need the light to be in. It has a built-in diffuser, which will expand the actual flash um, range 14 to 14 millimeters. And it also is fully compatible with Nikon's ITTL technology. And that's really important because ITTL is what allows this flash to work perfectly with even the most modern Nikon DSLR and mirrorless cameras. It essentially uses a pre-flash to allow the camera to measure the light and maximize the setting of the uh, light output to the flash um, when you actually then take the photograph. It means perfect exposures the majority of the time. And that's great because one thing this flash is slightly less good at is giving you choices and menus. The menu system is unfortunately based on the SB800s and I can tell you it's not great. The, um, it is a little screen that gives you some information. However, it's very limited. I'm just gonna mount it on my Nikon D300 that I have here, just so that we get the sort of full choices. So as I mount it, you can see that TTL is active, active with backlighting mode um, and all oh, goes into standby, that's great. Um, and you can also see it's automatically set itself to 50 millimeters. In theory, that's um, exactly what you want it to do. It does go into standby mode very quickly, but the second you start focusing, it will um, basically come back to life. It also has on the side a little infrared sensor. Now this is used for remote mode, which means on a camera such as the D300, which has a built-in pop-up flash, we can put this in this camera into commander mode using this flash, and we can actually activate the SP600 remotely. That means if you'd like to take a photograph and be a bit more creative, for instance, uh, you are taking a picture of a friend and you want to have the flash hit the side of a face rather than head on, to give you sort of a nice softer light, you can actually hold it or indeed you can obviously mount it on a tripod using a uh, flash stand. I don't believe this actually came with a flash stand, so if so, you'll have to buy a third party one or one from one of Nikon's other models. Another thing this doesn't come with is a diffuser dome, which is a real shame. However, the third party, um, third party makers have pandered to that. So if you take out the built-in diffuser and then you put the diffusion dome on top, this one is made by Stoffen, you will still get nice diffused light. It is powered by four AA batteries. Um, if you use nickel metal hydride ones, um, you'll get the best recycling times, but they're perfectly adequate. The custom setting menu, as I said, isn't the easiest to use, which is unfortunate. However, it's unfortunately one of those things that you have when you have a camera that is aimed at consumers, you get a little bit less choice. It's not the end of the world. You can still go through the menu and make changes if you want to, um, and it does work. It just takes a little bit of getting used to, and you may want to make yourself a little crib sheet, but I think that's fine. I think the point though, is that you can pick one of these up on eBay for around 60, 50 to 60 pounds. That is a very similar price to the Nikon SB800, which is going for around 60 to 80 pounds. So should you buy this or an SB800? Well, because these weren't aimed at professionals, generally speaking, these are in better condition on eBay when you buy them. So if you want a flash that hasn't necessarily seen professional abuse, this might be the way to go. That being said, it is much less powerful than the SB800 and it also has less included accessories. So you'll need to weigh up with what you want to do with the features that this has versus the SB800. 
That being said, given that it's completely compatible with Nikon's newer cameras and mirrorless cameras, it's still a good choice. So if you're in the market for a flash, definitely consider the SB600. I hope you found this useful, just a quick overview of the SB600 and how it might fare up in 2020. If you have any questions about this or any of the other Nikon flashes featured in my other videos, pop them in the comments below and I'll be happy to reply. Equally, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It really does help. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Goodbye.